There is a lot going on this week. The protests have prompted some questions even about possible spikes in COVID-19 cases and those spikes happening soon. Our nine health expert, Dr. Paul Coley, has more on our weekly numbers. So Dr. Coley, let's start with the big question. How have we been doing on testing so far? Uh, good morning, Liz. So the good news is that we continue to really go in a positive direction with the tests with a slight uptake. So this week I want to talk about median number of tests rather than average number because we've had a few outliers. So when you have outliers, the average numbers can be skewed. So median numbers are more accurate representation. So the median numbers, if you look over the last two weeks of May, are 4,761 tests. And remember, our goal by the end of May was 8,500 tests. So we're still quite a ways from that goal but this is better than the median that we had in the first two weeks of May. Now, I want to say that Governor Polis has announced that he hopes to have the supplies to, to really reach that goal of 8,500. And if you look at the last five days, you can see that three out of those five days, we had greater than 7,000 tests. So we are definitely inching in the right direction. But to be honest, in my opinion, I feel like we're not making progress fast enough. We've had now several weeks to get our testing up to par. And you know, especially in the setting of relaxing social distancing and now these protests, we really need to make sure we have that testing because it's not just the number of tests that matters, but we learned early in the pandemic, it's how soon we get those tests out. So I'm concerned that if we continue at this pace, we're going to miss the boat again and we really are going to see that spike again in two weeks. So we've heard from Mayor Hancock, who has said that he is hoping that everybody who was out at those protests uh, over the past few days and in the future goes and gets tested. When we're talking about numbers and supply, is there enough for all of those people if they all decide to go and do that? That's a great question. At this point, no. I mean, we, like I said, we've had a few days where we reached 7,000 tests, but if hundreds and hundreds of people who went to the protest go and get tested, we're likely not going to be able to accommodate all of those at the current supply that we have. So we really do need to kind of step it up quickly so that we can pick up those cases, because if we don't, you can imagine contact tracing people who were at a protest is going to be a nearly impossible task. Yeah, no kidding. So can you actually help us understand what the makeup of the people getting COVID is here in Colorado and then how this compares to the protesters? Yeah, this is really important, actually, because what we're seeing is a very consistent trend is that the people that are spreading the infection are the adults and the young adults. And then the people that are dying from the infection, as we've heard many times, are the older vulnerable population. So if you look at the makeup, you see that the majority of people that get the infection, that's those gray bars there, are the ages of 20 to 60 years old. So the young adults and the adults. And then we do have some kids as well. We have 1,183 kids aged 10 to 19 and 553 kids less than 10 years of age. Age, but you see that pretty much all the ages shown in light blue are getting into the hospital. But it's really those older people that are shown in dark blue that are ending up dying. And you can imagine that the demographic of the average protester really falls in that 20 to 50 year old age group. So it's really those gray bars. So the statistical probability of one of these protesters being in that gray bar and having COVID infection is actually quite high. Interesting. All right, Dr. Coley, as always, thank you so much.